Wenceslao Miguel Herrera, nicknamed El Fusilado, was born on 1890. He was a Mexican man who was captured on March 18, 1915, suspected of taking part in the Mexican Revolution. The Mexican Revolution, or Spanish, Revolución Mexicana, 1910-1920, was a major revolution that included a sequence of armed struggles that transformed Mexican culture and government. Although the regime of President Porfirio Diaz was increasingly unpopular after 31 years, there was no foreboding that a revolution was about to break out in 1910. The regime failed to find a controlled solution to the issue of presidential succession, resulting in a power struggle among competing elites and elites and the middle classes that sometimes involved the masses. This provided the opportunity in some places for agrarian insurrection. Although often studied as an event solely of Mexican history, from the beginning to the end, foreign activities figured crucially in the revolution's course. Not simple antagonism from the U.S. government, but complicated Euro-American imperialist rivalries, extremely intricate during the First World War. Diaz had initially said he would not run again for election, setting off a flurry of political activity, but he then reneged. Wealthy landowner Francisco I. Madero challenged Diaz in the 1910 presidential election, and gained considerable popular support, causing Diaz to jail him. Following a rigged election that Diaz won, Madero called for a revolt in 1910 in his October plan of San Luis Potosi. Armed conflict broke out in earnest in November 1910 starting in northern Mexico, led by Madero, Pascual Orozco and Pancho Villa. These Maderista forces received support from portions of the middle class, the peasantry, and organized labor enabling them to pursue a military campaign in the north. Ending with Orozco's capture of Ciudad Juarez in May 1911. Diaz was forced out of office by the Treaty of Ciudad Juarez in which he resigned and went into exile. New elections were scheduled for the fall. And Francisco Leon de la Barra became the interim president. Madero's advisors Venustiano Carranza and Luis Cabrera warned against allowing the old regime to linger in power, since the revolutionaries had won the contest against the regime in armed combat. Madero ignored them and the elections took place in October 1911 in a free and fair vote. Madero overwhelmingly won the presidential contest and took office in November. He won a political victory, but did not make revolutionary changes. Once in power, November 1911 to February 1913, Madero's opposition rapidly grew, from old supporters of the Diaz regime, foreign governments and investors. Revolutionaries who had brought about Diaz's ouster, but whom Madero dismissed in favor of the federal army they had defeated. Peasants who felt betrayed that Madero did not implement agrarian reform. And urban workers who did not see Madero helping their interests. Peasants revolted, urban workers' strikes grew in number, and the press newly freed from Diaz's censorship chronicled Madero's failings. Madero kept his hold on power with the aid of the federal army. But in February 1913, the army in a conspiracy with political opponents to Madero and the support of the U.S. ambassador, staged a successful coup d'etat. In the ten tragic days, Madero and Vice President Pino Suarez were forced to resign and were assassinated. 
the sequence of armed conflicts saw an evolution of military technology from Villa's old-style cavalry charges to Obregon's use of machine gun nests protected by barbed wire. One major result of the revolution was the dissolution in 1914 of Mexico's federal army, which Madero had kept intact when elected in 1911 and Huerta had used to oust Madero. Although the conflict was primarily a civil war, foreign powers, which had important economic and strategic interests in Mexico, figured in the outcome of Mexico's power struggles. The United States played an especially significant role. The losses amongst Mexico's population of 15 million were high, but numerical estimates vary a great deal. Perhaps 1.5 million people died, and nearly 200,000 refugees fled abroad, especially to the United States. When Ceslao Miguel, a soldier of Pancho Villa during the Mexican Revolution, was captured and immediately stood in front of a firing squad. He was sentenced to death without a trial, and was shot eight, nine times by a firing squad in the body, and received the coup de grace, or one final shot to the head point blank range to ensure death. Our bodies are full of surprises, and to survive, the body of an organism can sometimes defeat the most impossible odds. From a medical perspective, no one should survive one bullet to the head. Although throughout history there have been a handful of cases where people were shot twice in the head and managed to survive but at the cost of major brain injury. Believe it or not, there is a man in history that did the impossible by surviving an execution where nine bullets were shot simultaneously at him and somehow survived. Even if most of the shots went to his head, the ninth one should have been 99.99% .99 lethal as it was taken point blank. Seeing that he was still alive, Miguel faked his death by holding his breath. Once the enemy soldiers left, he ran away on his own two feet looking for help. He entered the Church of St. James Apostle in downtown Santiago Tequixquiac, where he found a parishioner that took the bullets out of him and stitched his wounds. The parishioner was amazed at how lucky he was to survive nine shots, so he hid him until 1924 when the Mexican Revolution ended. Not only did Miguel survive nine shots, but he had no brain damage. In 1930, Miguel migrated to the United States in the look for a better life. Although his story became quite popular in Mexico, nobody really knew him in the United States. People started asking questions about what happened and how he had ended up with his face so disfigured. That is when he started telling his famous story and the word quickly got out. It wasn't until 1937 when Miguel really became popular around the United States with his first appearance on the Ripley's Believe It or Not radio show in Cleveland, Ohio. Miguel became so loved by the audience that NBC started a tour around the United States for people to see this hero live. Within the tour, his wounds would be shown the executed one attracted the attention of producers all over America as people really saw him as a true hero. Despite the major injuries suffered due to the execution, Miguel managed to live to the age of 85. He died in Mexico in 1975 due to natural causes. Thank you for watching Death Row.